so much like your mother. So Agatha all along episode 5 really picked up the pace with that shocking ending. And goddamn, I was expecting it, but not this soon. I was honestly expecting for the reveal for who Teen really was to be at the end of the season and not right now. But we got a lot to break down from this episode, so let's jump into it. First of all, the episode starting off with Agatha being shot with all the magic and absorbing it, killing her coven, was all to lead in to the Ouija board scene with her mother showing up. Just to all tie back into her backstory. And I do like how they also focus on Agatha's son and Teen and Rio in the recap because that, those are all the characters that they focus on later in the episode. Sometimes when you watch the shows and they show flashbacks from earlier episodes, other series, you know they're about to talk about that specific topic. But it turns out during their time on the road, getting real there, they left the door open and the Salem 7 walked right in. And what's interesting about this too is we find out that Salem 7- When Agatha murdered her sister witches, she spared their young children. Yeah, and then they became a feral, hive-minded coven bent on revenge. So that kind of ties back into the comics, where in the comics, the Salem 7 is a group of magically mutated superhumans who all shared the same father, Nicholas Scratch. So in the comics, Agatha Thun had the Salem 7. So really interesting to see how they kind of tied that into that story. You know, it's different, but kind of the same theme. And then they all finally get to use brooms like classic witches, even going up and above past the moon, just like you would see in like a fairy tale story with them. Even real laughing like a witch. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza seems to be having a lot of fun with her character, and I love to see it. But as the road forces them on their trial and they get pushed forward down the road, we go into a new house, which is themed like the 80s. Pretty much everything inside, how they're dressed, is all that classic 80s theme. You have troll dolls from the 80s. Even the G-Shocks they're wearing are from the 80s as well. When Agatha is talking about how they're going to complete the trial, Alice is like, how? Kiss, marry, kill? Because they're kind of at a slumber party. So it kind of fits with the themes that people would play Kiss, Mary Kill during these times. And the fun part here too is Teen is wearing clothes very, very close to what Billy was wearing in WandaVision and kind of resembling the colors of Wiccan, which is kind of like that first tease about the big reveal by the end. But we'll talk about that all, all at the very end because I feel like that deserves its own own part of the video and i like how they have the trial is agatha's trial where she talks to the dead tied in with the ouija board which is a popular game that people play to talk to spirits and i like the rules where like if you remove your hand the spirit gets released and it's very interesting to see how they play this because they remove their hand and it doesn't seem like a spirit gets released and then they play it as they do as agatha pretends to be mrs hart messing with them and taunting the spirits as well by doing this which kind of all leads into the fact that Agatha actually does get possessed in the end, but by her mother instead. Evanora Harkness. But I love how they lead into this, how they were kind of... I, I fully thought that something was going to come out of the TV while they were leading into this. Because you could see the TV in the background that reminded me of the TV from The Ring, where the creepy girl climbs through the TV. And it was interesting, when they're doing the Ouija board, it says death is here with them. Where real laughs, because real is death. I think we're kind of putting that together after these two episodes, that real is the embodiment of death because of kind of just how her character is. And I love how they point out that she doesn't like ghosts because they're dead, but they're not fully gone yet. And they're still in the land of living because they have something holding them there, which I thought was really interesting because the thing that's holding them there is Agatha being punished because she needs to be punished for what she did to her coven. And you could even see that Agatha is legitimately scared because she lost all her power. She has nothing to fend against this. And then she gets possessed by her mother, which she looks like something that's straight out of The Exorcist and probably other horror movies as well that takes references from that. Any horror film with someone being possessed, she gets all crunched up and body moves around, which was creepy, but it worked really well. And I thought this was actually great horror elements in this show. And I love how Rio's in this episode is even standing up for Agatha being like, we're not letting, we're not leaving her with you. Like Rio cares about Agatha. You can see that in her. And she won't let her stay with her mother because she knows how terrified Agatha is of that. Even her mother saying Agatha was born evil and that she should have been killed when she left her body. Which I don't think is fully true. I think Agatha might be slightly evil, but she was never given that chance to be good. She was always used as probably a tool or something else to gain more power. Where her magic is stealing other people's magic. Maybe because of that power alone, that's what makes her evil. And because no one ever showed her another way or taught her how to do it. And because it's kind of like addiction where we see later in the episode where Alice is using her power on her and Agatha absorbs it all. Kind of an addiction she has. She needs to take that power away. She needs it. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how they play with that, especially with what happened during this episode. Like even having Jen willing to leave Agatha 
but Agatha begging for her not to leave her. You could see how she's scared. And then when it starts getting possessed again, and Alice hits her with that power, she just starts to absorb it all. When Lilia turns around and says, Knight of Wands, that's a tarot card. And that tarot card represents a surge of energy, daring adventures, and self-assured confidence, which it encourages us to take action and put our ideas into motion. This dynamic card signifies the completion of a task and fulfillment of goals urging to finish what we start, which could be a tie to what Alice is because she's a protection witch and her job there was to protect them and that's what she did she saved agatha but in the end sacrificed herself do i think she's actually dead not really i have a feeling that Ag that alice might come back especially with what they did in this episode agatha was stopped by nicholas scratch her son it snaps her out of it even though she's already killed alice at this point agatha has finally woken up she heard her son's voice and that also means that he is fully gone. Like Rio said last episode, the boy is not hers. Which then, it kind of twists Agatha. I think this power is manipulating her. Because as soon as she gets out of there, she looks visibly hurt. She doesn't look like she really wanted to take all that power. She looked like she's hurt from what she did to Alice. Especially with what they just went through. Alice literally just got the demon away. Completed her trial and then was killed right after. It doesn't sit right with me. And it feels like something else is going on here. Because even in this episode, Agatha says that she can be good which I don't think she wants to be this monster, this evil being. She wants to be better, and I think, I still think that this season, that this series will be her learning to be better and not be as evil as she once was. Like, even with Teen getting mad at her, saying Agatha said she couldn't control it, all ties back into that addiction for power. She can't control it, even though he refuses to believe that, and he refuses to kill anyone to serve his own agenda. That's when you kind of see a turn in Agatha, where Agatha asks him in a very evil tone. Which kind of ties into Agatha kind of realizing who Teen was here. She realizes that's not her son and there's only one other person it can be. And the way he's acting and how he refuses to kill others kind of ties back into Wanda and how she was being and how she refused to believe that she was controlling an entire town and what was really going on there in WandaVision. I also think one of the reasons why she was getting mad and why she turned so easily there was because she felt betrayed. Teen and the others were working with her, but as soon as they assumed she did that on purpose to steal Alice's power, she went back to her evil ways. And I love how she literally confirms you're just like your mother. Right there, confirming that Teen is Billy, Wanda's son. Right there at the end, con confirming it. And when Teen controls Jen and Lilia to throw Agatha into the swamp, it kind of ties back into the fact that Teen says he refuses to kill to serve his own agenda. Which at this point, there looks like to be a switch flicked in Teen, where something is going on in him. Which we do see him wearing a crown, like his mother's crown, in the, this episode. Maybe there's some dark magic in him. Maybe there's something that brought him here. Just like how in the comics, he got reborn into another body. It could have been brought over with some dark magic from Mephisto. Because his in the comics, Wanda did use part of Mephisto's soul to create Billy and Tommy. So that could be a reference to that. Where he has this darker part going on in him. And he needs to break free from that. Plus, he takes control of Jen and Lilia. Which is kind of a tie to his comic powers. Where he is able to manipulate people to an extent. I do definitely think Agatha saying, you're like your mom is some part of him realizing who he is and that power overpowering him as he realizes what he needs to do. Which I don't think Agatha and Jen and L Lilia are dead. I've seen some people think they got sent right back up to the main world. However, I think by throwing them into that swamp, it's sending them to the next trial. And you know what we didn't see there is Rio wasn't with them. Which Rio pieced it at some point. So Rio might save them from the swamp or go with them and lead them to the next trial. Which I, there's a lot of things that could be happening here. Obviously, they're not dead. The show's not going to end at episode 5. The biggest reveal here was having Teen be revealed as Wanda's son. I mean, they never specifically said it, but with that crown, I think we can put two and two together. And then having it that Agatha's realizing who he is, why he's with them, and kind of what's going on there. Now at the end too, a little fun tidbit there is after we see him in the crown, the song starts to play, You Should See Me in a Crown by Billie Eilish. So a little fun nod there as we see who Teen really is. Even though this episode was shorter than normal, it actually was really well done. Just having these really good elements when it came to the horror side of things while adding in the little fun tidbits there, but also changing our character. Rio really shows her love for Agatha. Agatha wants to be good, but then turns to evil. And then Teen kind of turns to that darker side that comes from his mother. So, going to be really interesting when we see them go forward, what's going to happen to their characters. Now it's kind of confirmed that Teen is on this road to revive Wanda Maximoff and bring her back to the MCU. At least that's going to be my main theory till we get to the end of the episode and that's either confirmed or denied. But let me know, what did you think of this episode and that big reveal at the very end there? And what do you think is really going on? If you like this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, helps out the channel a lot. And you get to stay up to date with all my Marvel breakdowns. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next week when we watch another episode of Agatha All Along.